In today's video, we're going to be looking at the DJI RC2 remote controller that I received together with my DJI Mini 4 Pro drone. Um, so this is the uh, first use that we're going to be going through and all the steps necessary to get this ready for your first flight. What we have here is the RC2 remote controller with a screen. So let's power this on. And I believe the steps for that is one click to check the battery and then second consecutive press to get the uh, remote um, up and running. So let's have a look. Battery level, there you go. Very bright screen. Um, very sharp the graphics i i've already looking at the dgi i can tell that this is going to be a quite a good quality screen on this remote so this is the first use the first steps connecting into wi-fi maybe to your phone i'm not really sure i haven't done this before uh, but we're going to find out everything in this video so obviously i'm based in uk so i'm going to be going for the english so i'm just going to press next very responsive very interesting now the software terms and use um, I'm not going to be going over the, the terms of use in this video and I don't think I will go uh, um, um, about it in any video but this is something that you need to always go through and make sure you read and understand uh, what are the terms and conditions uh, for the device. So agree to that. Now country and region, I'm going to be looking for United Kingdom. So how do we do it? There you go. So United Kingdom select. I'm happy with that. Next, very responsive screen. I can feel that I'm literally touching what I'm supposed to be. So I'm going to join my home network. That's the dream network, obviously. And then I'm going to put here my password. I'm going to sk skip this part of the video. You don't need my password. So um, I'll see you shortly. I've put my password in. I'm ready to connect. Now, um, the keyboard is uh, very good. So I've been touching the letters and other characters on the screen. And the, you know, the place that I touched, it responded to, there was any, I, I didn't experience any misclicks, any typos, purely because I, you know, pressed too close to the edge of the letter or the character, and therefore I pressed maybe another area on the screen. So that is really fluent, so far so good. I'm looking in a different angle as well, I don't want to be captured by the camera. And uh, I can see um, very well. So looking from a different angles, why you're using it, it's not going to be a problem in my opinion. So let's go ahead, let's okay that and connect. There you go. I feel we're ready, uh, the refresh. So I'm just gonna go next. I don't think there's any more steps. Uh, time zone, oh, we definitely not in here. So let's look for London. Go next to the next screen. And we have a note on the screen, make sure the time set is correctly. London, we're looking at 12.09, yep, I can confirm. And then incorrect time may prevent device activation. I think we are fine in this area, so continue. Uh, yet again, I need to log in here. Um, so I'll be with you in a moment. Now I've passed the uh, DJI account login details. So I believe I am now uh, about to become tied with my account to this remote. And then what is this? So what I've noticed while I was trying to put my account in, so password and the email information were fine. When I was asked to put the type of CAPTCHA for character verification code, it did not work. So if I follow the uppercase letters, it was rejected every single time and saying either the um, characters were wrong or the password was wrong. But the moment uh, I've, I've, I've input them into the interface with the lowercase, completely opposite to what they were, uh, I managed to get to the activation screen. So that a little bit of weird, a little bit of a glitch in my opinion. It took me like four times to retype my very long uh, 30 characters password for no reason. So I, I, I think that could have been much easier um, um, and to do, um, especially on this device. But otherwise everything works fine. The, like I said, the inputs uh, were working really good and no issue over there. So what I'm gonna um, do at the moment is to activate. And here we are. We are, I believe we are already in. So welcome, let's get started with a guide on how to use this product. So um, I haven't used it for the first time, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go straight into it. So start, uh, screen gestures. So swipe horizontally from edge of the screen to return 
um, to previous screen. So something similar to like a Mac OS, I believe. Um, that's pretty good. So let's see. Ah, brilliant. So going back and then moving forward. So we have left digital and right digital. These are for a gimbal tilt. Okay, so when you press that button here, uh, sorry, that the wheel here, you get, you go from horizontal to vertical. And then the other one is the zoom, which is, I think it's digital. It doesn't have an optical zoom. It's a digital zoom. That's very um, useful to know. And then we have a shutter and the record. So one of the pictures, one for making a video start and stop. Really cool, very easy, very intuitive. That's gonna be um, move on. Then we have return home. So press and hold to enable smart return home. So that's this button over here. I think it has a two option, return to home and pause. So mid, -life, mid flight pause as well. So break, there you go. So that's what they refer to. And then we have the switch mode. So uh, what's that? Cine smooth, normal and sport. So something to, um, Something that I've learned is that when you go to sport, the features like optical avoidance are switched off because this is for more dynamic flight and so on. So make sure, I think for the beginner, the easiest would be the, uh, um, the normal one or the cine smooth. But yet again, something to learn to find out. Then two buttons on the back, C1 and C2, then they can be customized uh, through the settings of the remote um, as, as the instructions on the screen. Uh, what else? So we have solid red. Aircraft not connected, so you can tell my DJI uh, Mini 4 Pro is not connected at the moment, which is um, accurate. Uh, green one would be the connected and the firmware firmware update failed for yellow. So straight away you get some information about the connectivity and about um, whether there is a new update for your remote control if you connect it to a Wi-Fi network or you feathering through your phone. Uh, move on. If the blue blinks link linking with aircraft, okay, so in progress, yellow battery warning, then control sticks are not centered, okay, so calibration port is possibly to be done, and then blinks red, smart control temperature too high, aircraft battery um, level low, okay, so two warnings that the aircraft may be running out of battery or the remote is about to lose the battery. But then I guess that's no problem because the moment it switches off after a period of time, I believe the drone would initiate the return uh, flight home and should come back to you um, um, as soon as that um, process gets uh, picked up. Um, so let's carry on. So I'm, I'm just quickly gonna have a look what's on the screen. So we have a time, a warning, and then we have the Wi-Fi or satellites and the battery level. Okay, optimal transmission distance. Adjust antennas position regularly when controlling aircraft to make sure aircraft is always within optimal transmission distance. So like I said, antennas, something, something that I've mentioned in my previous videos, when you have your antennas up, make sure they are always facing, the, you know, the flat part is facing the drone for the optimal, um, for the optimal transmission of the data. And yeah, let's go. So go to DJI Fly. Wow, the screen is very sharp. The whites are amazing. Um, I'm already excited about using it. I believe we're going to first... Ah, a little video. Let's go, let's watch it. Nice little, um, nice little clip from DJI. Um, as you can probably notice, the screen is very bright, very sharp, very nice. Um, and yeah, but what I was saying before the video has shown on the screen is that we probably will need to go through the firmware update because I don't know how long this was in the box. And then, so that's what I'm expecting as soon as we get to the actual user interface. So some of the information for authorization, um, DJI collect some information um, um, for improving the service, I believe. So mobile device GPS on, DJI device GPS info on, uh, hardware info and approximate location. I have no problem with sharing that information. I think this is to improve the, the experience and, and all the aspects of controlling it, you know, from your drone uh, through the remote and vice versa. So let's 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 jump into it. Let's let's provide that information. DJI product improvement project. So I'm not gonna be doing it um right now, so I'm just gonna skip it. I, I thought it's gonna be a quick process, but if that's 
a more lengthy, maybe something for another video, maybe something for everyone to choose whether they're happy to do so and so on and what are the nitty gritty details for each of those and what information they collect. Remember, uh, remember, you know, you have right to your privacy. If you don't feel comfortable at any point, don't do it because that information is in the end of the day is used to make more money. And if you feel like your data isn't free, then well, take the liberty of saying no um, to joining any sort of partnership program, program to improve and um, uh, how this device in, um, works and what sort of information you're willing to share with them. So I'm going to do not now at the moment. Okay, so we have here, so we, I think, yeah, I think we're back on the main screen. So we have the academy, academia, academy, academy, uh, where you can learn how to fly the aircraft, where should you fly and so on. So useful when you go out or before you go out and you want to find out how I make sure that, you know, I should be or I can fly in this particular area. So there could be some information on how to do it or where to look for it. Let's go next. Then we have a connection guide. So tell you what is the, I guess, the connectivity strength between your remote and your drone. Um, yeah. And here we are. This was the first initial use of the remote, all the steps required to get it to the user screen. And uh, yeah, and I think I'm going to end it here. I think that's uh, sufficient enough. I haven't seen many videos of when people unpack it and then, you know, what are the steps? You know, you once you get the remote, you're going to go through the steps. But if you're just curious what the process is, here you go. The video is available. And yeah, let me know in the in the comments down below if you have any questions. Um, maybe if you like or you didn't like the movie, you know, it's open for criticism. Like I said, in some of my previous videos, I am first, um, uh, you know, I'm just starting my YouTube channel and I haven't done this before. I don't know what to look for, how just the, uh, just the sharpness and quality, what is that people are looking for in those videos and so on. However, if you did find that useful, you know, hit that like and subscribe button for some other videos that would definitely help the channel to grow. I would definitely get more interaction with, with, uh, with other people. And yeah, and uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.